This is a revised, updated and hopefully improved version of a video I made earlier. I was inspired to start building 3D printers by watching Thomas and Lader's Building the Cheapest Possible Prusa i3 Mark II clone. I watched every episode of this series. Australian creator Tech2C launched his Hypercube. I watched his build log and really appreciated it. He had some novel ideas like using carbon fiber rods for the x-axis and we've seen that again recently. After those videos my parts hoarding started. I got a lot of extrusions, fasteners, 5mm all sizes, 3mm all sizes almost, linear rails, stepper motors, NEMA 17 and 14, bearings, idlers, displays and controller cards, belts, fans and a lot of extruders and some probes as well and I needed power supplies, all types of power supplies. These are the two first printers I made and I started out printing on glass I never used this blue tape. I had this colorful quartet for quite some time. This printer was actually a design, I can't remember by who, but it was called AM8. I did some tweaks to this printer and that gave me confidence to start to design my own printers. I tried a few things like adding a D-sub for the connector to the hot end. Not exactly canvas, but it was an idea at the time. And some of these designs were not that good. If I didn't get the print quality I wanted, I just scrapped the printer. And that happened frequently. I decided to go back to the basics and ended up with these two Cartesian printers. They are both very basic designs, but with linear rails, sensorless homing and inductive probes for bed mesh. I never have to do any adjustment to the C offset. I call this printer the C120. It's a mix between my old printers and the printer called the Bonsai. The Bonsai is sort of a mini Purusha i3 you could build with some old parts from printers. You'll find the link in the description. The Bonsai doesn't have a heated bed, but I'm using a heated bed on mine. But it might be difficult to find the correct size bed today. 150 by 150 is more common now. The C220 shares a lot of components with the C120, but I'm using 40 by 20 extrusions in the Y direction and also two linear rails on the Y direction. And the build plate is 220 by 220. The printer is quiet and it's very easy to maintain. I stopped working around with SD cards long time ago and today I'm using my slicer to prepare the files and upload them to the printer. By using a solution like Repetier Server on a Raspberry Pi, you can control a lot of old printers from a web interface. So this has all become quite convenient. But still, this is the last printer I'm going to build. At the lower end of the market, you can now buy much better printers than you can build yourself at a low budget. It was pointed out to me after a previous video that there are still some applications where you really should build your own printer. Like for industrial grade printers at a lower budget or maybe IDEX or a multicolor with less material waste than you get with the commercial printers now. Building something like the Voron 0.2 could be interesting but I don't think it's worthwhile for me. Building a Voron 2.4 could be interesting, especially with the LDO kit, but the price of 1199 is a little bit much for me. Then you have these guys that build something that looked like a Voron 2.4, but isn't. Still, the pricing of this thing is remarkable. In my opinion, if you won't start with 3D printing, you should just buy a 3D printer. Building something doesn't make sense unless you are at a really advanced level now. The mechanical part of the project might be easy, but the software is getting more and more difficult in my opinion. That said, I understand that people find this hobby very fascinating, whatever your level is, and I wish you happy building and printing. Bye for now.